There are some folks who know every nuance of the racetrack and can read the form like a stock portfolio. Others enjoy, but do little more than make an educated guess. At times, members of both groups simply bet on the jockey. And when they do, the majority focus on Keeneland's all-time leading rider. Dave Baker tells us those folks have their system down pat. When you look at rows and rows of awards like this, it's easy to imagine that you're in some sort of museum. But quite the opposite is true. This is simply a house. It just happens to be the home of Keeneland's all-time leading jockey, Pat Day. It doesn't seem to be real. It's, uh, it's like a great dream, in which case I don't want to wake up. But I do. I come down and walk around and, and uh, think about where I came from and think about how the Lord has blessed me and certainly express my gratitude for where I am today. To put things in perspective, Day's on the track accomplishments are legendary. He's led the nation in victory six times, won the Eclipse Award as the country's top jockey on four occasions, and earlier this year, he became just the third rider joining Bill Shoemaker and Lafitte Pinkai Jr is the only jockeys to win 8,000 career races. It's a lot of miles horseback. I think, man, am I blessed. But unless you got to see this collection yourself, you'd never know that Pat Day was the best in his business. You see, for the longest time, Day got by on ability alone. But his personal life was a mess, hitting rock bottom after he won the year-long riding title on the last day of the 1982 season first two, two weeks of 1983 was a blur. Uh, when I came out of this drug and alcohol induced stupor, things hadn't changed. And I wasn't happy. And I wasn't content. And certainly it was a, it was a great feat to have been leading rider in the country, but it did not equate to long-term happiness and joy and peace and contentment. That self-destructive path never veered until 1984, when Day woke up in the middle of the night and saw Jimmy Swaggart on TV. I, I fell on my knees and wept and cried and invited Christ into my life at that moment. How long I was on the floor, I don't know. I did eventually get up and go back to bed. I got up the next morning and when I went outside, the whole world seemed different. Um, the, the, the grass was greener, the sky was bluer, the air was clearer. Day thought that simply by becoming a Christian, he'd be rewarded with even more success on the track. But his breakthrough didn't come until he unexpectedly got the mount on wild again in the Breeders' Cup Classic. The uh, groom led the horse around in a circle waiting for the people to get ready. As we turned and started to face the grandstand, I thought, ah, let me showboat a little bit, you know, kind of wave my helmet. When my hand touched my helmet, the audible voice of God said, it's not them, it's me. And I said, thank you, Jesus. That victory, I don't know what all it's done for me in terms of my career, but I really truly believe that it took me, it took me to the next level. As Day's success grew even larger, so too did his love for Kentucky. He now lives outside of Louisville, and his love affair with Commonwealth racing fans is without equal. Pat Day begins the Keeneland meeting with 773 wins and 72 trips to the winner's circle in stakes races. A little different mindset, the people who come to the races there. It's, a, it's more of a social event. It's a, I call it my working vacation. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be there. Day will be 48 next week, and with the shape he's in, shows no signs of slowing down. Despite that, though, he's already certain how he'd like to be remembered. Now, I have one primary goal in life, and that is to one day hear Jesus say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. And that's, that's what I want to be remembered for.